Hey everyone, welcome to What Would It Cost? Today I'm sitting down with Alex Glickman, and what an interesting character this this man is. He's an absolute awesome entrepreneur, and very, very cool story about his tea business that he actually transitioned into a nightclub, right? So, gonna have a lot of fun on this one. I got a lot of questions for him, and got a lot of laughing to do, because uh, he's awesome. <laughs> How's it going? Club? Yeah. Uh, it's busy. I mean, uh, it's, it's, you know what? The industry is changing. Yeah. Uh, with the pricing for, for pretty much everything, we had to adjust to it. Yeah. But it's business. You know, if you don't adjust, if you don't go with the flow, with the, with the situation around you, you shouldn't be in business in the first place. Yeah. So you have to adapt. This is the key to any, to any uh, businessman. Yeah. Is to adapt. That's the difference between us or people who are regular employees. Right. We adapt to things. We work things out. We go around them. And this is the key to being successful. Yeah. You figure it out. You know, they raise a the mortgage rate. You figure out a way how to talk to your clients different. Yeah. How to explain things different. Yeah. Exactly. And if they reduce, you pump it a different way. Yeah. So this is how we adjust. Same thing with the prices, with inflation. I mean, it's hard. We can feel the clients feel, and I'm not cheap. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. But we continue to strive. You know, you, you can give up. You can never give up. Yeah. yeah. We're, we're men. 100%. We never give up. Never, brother. Never. That's what makes us stronger. <laughs> now, guys like you make me stronger because I see more and more young people are being so successful and they drive you. You know, you always have, we actually had a conversation with my assistant while going there, coming here. If you don't have a role model when you're growing up, mm -hmm. teachers not going to do shit to you. Yeah. But if you don't have a role model growing up, yeah, you're gonna end up in the wrong place. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it doesn't matter how you have to have a role model. That's what's important. You know, our educational system is so shitty yeah. that we need to change things around. We need to find good role models. So that's why people are turning into guys like Andrew Tate, mm. the ones that are blowing up, is because they look at them like role models. Mm. Those role models are supposed to be your parents, right? You know what I mean? They're supposed to take the time and educate you how to be a man or a woman. Right. You know, but we, I mean, sorry, the new generation is turning to guys on TikTok and, and Instagram, you know what I mean? To kind of get that energy, you know, to go, yeah, to feel different. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? So who are some of those role models for you, bro? For me, uh, my role models, Jesus, man, I knew you are going to catch me somewhere. <laughs> uh, I'm going to, I'm going to do like, you know, I'm going to do like Snoop Dogg, me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Fuck yeah, right. I love it. Me. Yeah. You know, it, it, it was so hard for me growing up here yeah. as an immigrant. Yeah, yeah. It was so hard for me to get to where I am, yeah. you know? And yeah, I mean, this is going to sound kind of cocky, but I think I deserve it. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. Right on. Doing what I'm doing right now, I am my own role model. Right. And I grow by looking at others. Looking at competitors, looking at other podcasters, looking at other educated people. Yeah. And suck out the information. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I have no educational background. Mm -hmm. High school kick out, drop out. Mm -hmm. I got kicked out from three high schools. Yeah. Got kicked out from college. Yeah. Just one of those, you know, the immigrant lifestyle. Just, I had some bad timing in my life, you know what I mean? Right. But you either go to the left or you go to the right. You either use that energy, that bad energy that you have to continue doing bad, and then you're going to go down, 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 or you're going to, you know, use that energy to become successful, famous, whatever it is, just to, yeah. to, to be something else than, than a criminal or anything else. You know what I mean? So it's just- You, you went right. Huh? You went right. I went right, I went right. <laughs> Try to go left. Bang, I went right. You didn't like left too much. You went right. I went left. I, I'm on the rail a little bit, yeah. Yeah. You know what the left's like, though. Yeah, you I wanted, can see. You didn't I want could, any more of it. I can see what's happening with our country. Yeah, I can yeah, yeah. know what left is. <laughs> <laughs> this is a different kind of topic. Yeah, That's yeah, no doubt. No. No. So a so little bit of snippets from some podcasts, from some social media, other influential figures out there that are really motivating you and you take little tips and tricks from that you apply to the going to now the beat of your own drum, it seems. Yeah, listen, I, I don't, I, I want to be honest, I don't listen to a lot of podcasters. I okay. do But I do look like certain, I do like Joe Rogan, which I don't, uh, which I think he's genius. Right. A fucking 
genius. You yeah. Know? I mean, and, and his driving, his ambition to learn. I mean, I, I kind of like feel like we are more or less on the, uh, on the same level. Yeah. Not, not that it's popular, but I mean, like, it's what I feel. But I'm not trying to be like him at yeah. all. Okay. Um, ben Shapiro. Mm-hmm. I like Ben Shapiro because I like the way he says things forward. You know what I mean? I just like the way, not because he's conservative, but just the way he explained things. You know what I mean? Like the, the problem with a lot of podcasters is that they want to dig deep into saying things politically correct. Mm. Not a lot of people are uh, that educated these days. They're TikTokers most of the time. They want to understand in in their language. Mm. And that's why guys like me, who is not educated, who, who speaks his mind, and, and they like it. I like uh, Pierce Morgan. Okay, yeah. I mean, he's a he is a nasty son of a bitch. <laughs> and then he is nasty son of a bitch. But um, <laughs> I mean, you catch a little bit here. You got that look in your eye, but dude. Yeah, I, I, I another I, level of appreciation because <laughs> I like when they push uh, but, the the button. Yeah. Like, that's what I do in my own podcast. If we have a podcast, somebody. I mean, I don't hold back. I like. <laughs> if I feel that this is this is something that people would want to hear. Yeah. If I feel that this is something that should be out there, I don't care about my reputation. I mean, you know, as soon as you touch the mic, your reputation is either here or here, so it doesn't matter, right? right, right. I mean, some of the shit that you read online, uh, if I um, I read, I'm like, motherfucker, are you insane? Who the fuck writes this shit? Like, how do you come up with that stuff, man? You know? <laughs> but um, it's part of the game. Yeah. You know, you get thousands, thousands of viewers who will like it. And then you get just as much who hate it or don't like it. And it's okay. Yeah. You're not supposed to be good to everybody. Right. You're supposed to be good to yourself, to your family, and the people who really appreciate you. Yeah. And that's the concepts of pretty much everything I do in life. Yeah. I mean, so it's in business, it's in podcasts, it's personal life, friendship, and it's kind of my mojo. Yeah. Very cool. What One, one of the realtors that we had on her here, her name was Kate Brodick. And I always showed her out for that saying that just matched up with what you had said. She said, not everyone's going to love you, right? And, or she said, you know, what did she say? She said, some people are going to love you and some people aren't. And yeah. it doesn't matter what you say or what you do. There's always going to be both. Okay, right? it's so okay. it's, 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 you can't control that, right? And it's okay. Yeah, right. It's, yeah, it gives you okay. that balance. No, you don't want anybody always somebody brushing you and being like, you're good. Right. You're good. Yeah. You want somebody to come and say, hey, yeah, dick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like, sure. like, it's it's just it's just one of those things, you know. But right, um, right. It's it's a podcast of life, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and now as it's going more and more, revolving more in social media, you sometimes I feel the pressure, but but the pressure is to do more content, right? Which I don't do that as much because I only post things when I actually feel. You know what I mean? It's just one of those things. Like I can wake up in the middle of the night, like at two in the morning, like. This is pisses me off, man. I gotta go talk about it, mm. and I'll go to the studio, record it, and and I know that it's 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 exactly how I feel, and this is exactly how people feel. Because when you work in the environment mm. where I am, um, you you get that energy, you get that sense of what's really going on, yeah, in people's mind, and I speak for them. You know so I mean? so just to go on that, yeah. just for the audience and 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 the people listening that don't know what you do. Yeah. Tell us a little bit more about that. I own a, you I own a nightclub. It used to be a tea shop, and then somehow, I don't know how, it just turned into a nightclub. <laughs> right, this, I mean, if you want to hear the story. This, Here's your clickbait. This, a tea <laughs> shop turned into a nightclub. Dude, this, this is the most fucked up. This is the most fucked up. I swear. Okay. So I'm I bought a tea. Listen, I'm so really I, looking forward to this. <laughs> Let's hear it. I bought a tea shop. <laughs> a tea shop? A tea shop. Yeah, it was a tea shop. Or tea? Yeah, a tea, tea shop. People come in, they smoke a little shisha and tea and sell desserts. <laughs> I bought it. <laughs> you bought it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Listen, I always wanted to do something different than what I was doing. Yeah, yeah. So this was a good concept, kind of like chill, no alcohol, you know. <laughs> yeah, you'd be, you're laughing, but you, but you have no, no idea how successful Did you be. pour the tea? No, I didn't. <laughs> okay. I poured the tea out of it. some tea bag in the tea. I did the other tea bag. <laughs> And that's how you end your marriage. <laughs> <laughs> your tea bag and marriage is gone. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. So you were open a tea yeah, open up a tea shop. I actually bought it from this guy and who was <laughs> who owned the tea shop. Why so was, was it not doing well? At the time? It wasn't doing well. <laughs> okay. Yeah. It was right. So I bought it. Down, eh? <laughs> and then you bring all the boys with all the tea bag and then everything goes back to normal. <laughs> <laughs> Well, yeah, listen, jokes aside, I bought a tea shop and um, 
Yeah. It was really busy. I mean, this was a very successful business. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I, I know it was very yeah. So what happened with buddy that couldn't make it work? Uh he had a different idea of how to do business. I wanted <laughs> like I just fucking boy. Like, yeah, it's not that easy, man. No, eh? it's not easy. Okay. Okay. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Okay. It's not that easy. It's funny, but it's not that easy. Right. Uh but uh <laughs> This is gonna be perfect for you for you. So you guys wanted you guys wanted some laughs, here you go. <laughs> right. You got a macho owner t shirt, but it was buddy. It yeah. was a very, very successful T-shirt. I'm oh, telling you, we a Tiva C. That's what the company called. Yeah, Tiva okay. And you be it was a, a thousand square feet spot with. <laughs> Anyways, it was a very busy, busy spot. I mean, we had two inches of rough from the back, from the front. We had lineups every day. It was just one of those things. Yeah. But it was a chilling spot, man. Yeah. And then my lease went up, so I decided to move to Thornhill because I went okay. to a, a different kind of. Atmosphere. I just wanted to a newer spot. You know, <laughs> yeah. I want. I wanted. No, I wanted to continue selling tea. Okay. I wanted to continue selling tea. <laughs> sorry, this is the first time I've heard about it. Okay. Sorry, I'm Bro, trying, you just trying know, to tea business is a fifty billion dollar a year industry. Okay, wow, well, fifty billion dollars a year industry. Yeah, just so you know, it's not funny, man, because it's a lot of money. <laughs> Aren't you a finest guy? <laughs> Sorry. Are we allowed to smoke cigars here? No. <laughs> You're switching your. Are you switching your way of doing business? Yeah, yeah. Or like more like chilling. <laughs> you want to see what tea baggy? I mean, tea is. <laughs> <laughs> is that what you brought me for? <laughs> yeah. Anyway, okay, so yeah, so you went you went into Thornhill and went to Thornhill and I opened up a little bigger bigger spot and I yeah. wanted to be like more of a lounge. Okay, a little bit of alcohol, a little bit of shisha, more of a lounge. So. Basically, everybody sits yeah. and enjoying the shisha, enjoying the atmosphere. Yeah. And I had a DJ who was playing. Okay. So it's a funny story because the DJ goes to the bathroom. This drunk girl goes to the DJ booth. I don't know what the fuck she did. She pushed the button, she did something, and the music went in the All of a sudden, I, I ran out of the kitchen because it was my friend in the kitchen. Run out of the kitchen. I see everybody's dancing. Like everybody's going wild. Now the DJ is running back with his pants down. I was like, what the fuck is happening? I'm like, listen, whatever you do, don't do nothing. We can't stop them now. They're going to, they want to dance. They, you just, you know, so like 150 people going crazy. Oh, really? In one spot, 150 people going wild. I'm like, keep on going this way. So what happened the next day, we get a million phone calls. When is the next party? When is the next party? When is the next party? I'm like, so I sat down with my manager. I'm like, I think we're turning this place to a different direction. Because I wanted to do like tea. I wanted to sell tea. That's what I wanted to do. Because it's a huge business. Right. And I was doing very, very successful. Being really, really good. We created our brand. I mean, it's a whole, we, uh, we um, uh, trademarked the, the, the company. I mean, it was perfect. It was it was not supposed to go that direction. But as people started calling and asking, I'm like, okay, let's do it. Yeah. And ever since, it's just been like, during the week, it's more of a sit down. Friday, Saturday, it's like Laval, it's like anywhere else. Like people going wild, it's insane. Lineups is like crazy. What's it called? Tiva C. Tiva C. Keep yeah. on laughing. Why are you not laughing what happened? now, huh? <laughs> what happened now, huh? Huh? What happened, huh? Yeah. I'm making money, bro. I make good money there. <laughs> Whatever brings in the shkato, right? <laughs> it's selling tea bagging. You know how much tea bagging I did after, I op- after the, it became a club? <laughs> <laughs> a lot, a different type of tea bag. Type of bag yeah. But uh, listen, it's a, it's a. I had well, to kind learn. of. You guys play hip hop, host, play everything, house music, yeah. your, your Eastern European music. Yeah. Um, How many people? Four hundred people, about two hundred people. Two hundred. Oh wow! You know, it's, okay. it's a mix. Yeah, nice. It's it's pretty plus a patio. We have summertime. It's super busy. Very cool. Yeah, man. but yeah. Um, it's 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 a it's a house. now we introduce a new menu, so we're like completely went different to what we used to have. We used to have like like easy, like fried stuff. Now we're going to like more sushi. Hired a chef, brought a chef from Ukraine. Nice, and it's uh, pretty cool atmosphere now. Yeah, I mean it's been beautiful. doing for what oh, more than ten years. Oh wow, very cool, man. That's awesome, bro. Yeah. And is it you? Look- Aren't you laughing now? Huh? Yeah. <laughs> I had to calm down. Wait till I start asking questions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> is that is that like so is that something that now you want to pick up and take in other areas or is it you know what the one show many people asking me to do one in Miami yeah you have no idea how popular a place is like right it's it's really really popular and 
Every, I just don't want to do that business, that kind of business in Miami. It's different. Yeah, Miami is is involved in. in it's more or less the same business, but it's very easy to fail there, mm-hmm. in terms of the club industry. Yeah. High rollers in that business really hold that position. Yeah, and God bless them because they're amazing. Yeah, but the minute you'll start pick up, it's not like here. Yeah, I mean they have li- they have licenses on top of a license on top of a license. Yeah, you know what I mean. So you can't just get one license to serve alcohol. You gotta get one license to serve wine, yeah. one license to serve just wine and beer, and then you have another license just to do hard liquor and a license to do shisha. I mean, th- and yeah. and if you know all these moves that and if you've been in the industry for a long time, yeah, you know, it's it's guys like me with ambition. I can come in. And then you can have problems. Uh, honestly, I'm not in the position to yeah to do it. I, I I like what I'm doing. I like doing this nice beautiful. this stuff. I like um, my career is switching a little bit. Yeah, in terms of uh, more of a public speaking, you know, which I never in my life in the million years I would ever thought I would do it. Public speaking, yeah, beautiful. like I would never thought I would do it because yeah, I mean, I, do you remember your first podcast? I do. Do you remember those feelings? Oof, the worst. So okay. nervous, man, just sitting mm-hmm. there thinking the whole world's looking at you and yeah, 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 yeah. And then if when half of the country does look at you like, Jesus Christ, I, my English shit, my this shit, what the fuck did I say that? How did I then put the, the words together? Yeah. And then and then you kind of get adjusted it and get you get used to them like, okay, you know what? If, if they like it, that's they like it. Right, right, right. Very cool. But a lot of people are asking me to talk about relationships. I don't know why I guess. I guess it's because of Tori. He likes Tori. Right, but I, I love Tori. But mine and her podcast, oh my god, yeah, this was a disaster, man. I mean, just like, but a lot of things that really happening out there with relationship is is that that we talked about, right? But that whole power tripping between each other, you know, that whole like why are relationship not working now. It's so hard to sustain any relationship now, anyways. Right, right. Like everybody, yeah. you know, the women have as much as goals as men. You know what I mean? Mm. So that collision, and, and it, we live in a society where everything is moving so fast right? that it's hard for us to control it and kind of calm things down. Right. I mean, right. I, so are, are, you, are you in a relationship? I'm always in relationships. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> yeah. I'm in a relationship with the whole world. Right. I'm in a relationship with you. Right. Not that kind of relationship, but I'm in a relationship <laughs> with you. You know, but yeah. Uh, it's, it's uh, yeah, I'm back and forth. Yeah. Yeah. Very I cool. was buried a couple of times. Oh, yeah. To Kid? Uh, no kids, no okay. kids. I was yeah. married to two beautiful women, you know, who I try to keep contact. We always say hi to each other, this and that. I mean, I have nothing bad to say about them. I'm still on good terms? Of course. You yeah. have, listen, I always say, the way you start your relationship, yeah, you have to end it exactly the same oh, way. It nice. doesn't matter yeah. how it goes. You know what I mean? These fightings, it's all, you know, that the stuff you used to put behind and one of you at least have to say, you know what? We had so many years together. We loved each other for so long. Fuck it. Let's just either take whatever you want or let it go. Yeah. You know what I mean? Most of the my, most of the stuff that we create during the divorce process, that we create a part of self, is that collision. Right. Instead of saying, okay, fuck it. Especially men. You know, fuck it. We'll get it again. Yeah. You take, you take it away from me now. Give me six months. I'll have it back. Yeah. It's just the way it is. Right. Right. Yeah. Very cool. And you ever want to have kids and, and get I do. long term relationships? Of course. Yeah. Of course. Yeah, yeah. I do. Of course. You just have to be with the right woman. Yeah. Not though. I don't want to end up like with my parents, you know, being part which played a big role in my life. You know, I had to live with an abusive uh, stepfather. Okay. Who made my childhood miserable. Right. You know, who. But at the same time, you know what I mean? I had a conversation with a friend of mine about the situation. Uh, he made my life miserable. But I became so much stronger because of that. Right. A lot of things that he put me down on, these are the things that I became yeah. better and successful at. Yeah. Whenever you say you're stupid at this, now I'm very good at this. You know right. what I mean? You shouldn't do this, now I'm doing all of it. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's, it's, you have to take the best out of the worst situation and live through it. Yeah. Because it's life. You know, it's, it's, um, you don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. You know what yeah. I mean? Like uh, I said in one of my videos, for me, the most important thing is to wake up in the morning. Right. Smile every morning. Yeah. Who gives a fuck? If you woke up, who gives a fuck what's happening around you? If you didn't get that text message or somebody died, somebody sick from your surrounding. Yeah. What can't you fix? Right. What can't you fix? What can't you redo? Right. That really have to impact your life to a point where you have to feel 
depressed and, and it'll ruin your day. Right. Nothing. Yeah. Pay a bill or, or <clears throat> pay a loan back. Yeah. They should worry about that, not you. Mm. You know? Yeah. You guys should worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna cut, you're gonna cut it? <laughs> great, great perspective, man. Love that, bro. Love that. Love but that. It's, I but that. I, like I said before, you guys inspire me. The young generation that is successful now, especially dealing with things like that I know I can't, real estate, uh, mortgages like you guys. It is so inspiring to see young men, young women drive themselves forward, yeah. become so successful, you know, because it's not an easy industry. This is a fucked up industry you guys are in. Yeah. You know, in between the banks and all, all, all these other mortgage companies, it's a huge competition because there's a lot of money involved. Right. But that drive, you know what I mean? That drive that makes me happy to see around around me and that positivity. I mean, I got a lot of good energy from you guys and I like it. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes that's you come cool. to interview and they're like, yeah, yeah, they don't want to talk to you like, Sonoma. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's yeah. cool. That's cool. You know, that's, that's so you cool. Be proud of yourself. It's so huh? cool how you're not like, you're not trying to suppress that or like hate on it or, or, you know, be jealous of it where it's like, you're letting that empower you, right? You're saying, well, you know, that's how I could show up and, and how I could be better. That serves as inspiration for me, right? Because sometimes like guys that are a little bit older and have the experience and have the years under their belt you know, may not embrace those weaknesses, right? Or those things that they're not as strong at and, and look to the, the younger generation and say, hey, what are you guys doing? What do I got to adapt? Where do I got to improvise? Where do I got to pivot? What do I got to do here to improve, right? So it's it's so cool and and, and that that's awesome that you stay vulnerable like that. You open up and you're like, all right, is that, that what's going on? I'll do it too then, right? Listen, you, I'm, look, I'm the type of person that if my friends are doing well, I want to push it forward. I want to, if I have a conversation with somebody, I'm like, look, this is the example, you know. Yeah. You take a guy who d went from nothing to this. This this girl went from from bad relation, from from just a ruined life to a very successful woman. I mean, this is very important. This is part of our being a good human being, good good person within your environment. Yeah, you know what I mean. To uh, push positivity, right? A lot of people like to push negativity. Yeah, I personally like to push positivity. Yeah, and I like. Uh, well, she, my my accent came out positivity, and and I like to push uh, for people to be positive around me too. Yeah, you know what I mean. So if somebody is going to be negative, I'm like, listen, if you're not going to go switch you to positivity with me, I'm not going to talk to you. There's yeah. nothing for us to talk about. Yeah, 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 there's enough shit in the world than me listening to somebody about their problems. Wake up, go do what everybody else doing. Yeah, it's all in your hands. Yeah. It's all in your mind. Yeah, you know what I mean. Exactly. Yeah. So that, you either can be the guy who is crying, shit went sour, or you can be the guy. I'll learn from it. I'll move forward. Yeah, beautiful. Love that. Amazing. Learn from your experiences. Have them make you uh, a better overall human being, an overall businessman, an overall family man. Apply that moving forward, and you're good. Of course. Of yeah. course. We have. Yeah. I mean, look, with the situations happening right now around the world. I mean, look at the states. Yeah, there was this mass shooting in school. I mean, this is so damn bad. I did a little reel. Uh, I think it was a couple of days ago, right? I don't know. But the whole mass shooting stuff. I mean, it's crazy. I mean, this is this the negativity that we have to live on every day. Yeah. So that, then we have to take the maximum out of that. Yeah. And have a good day. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, like yeah. it's so much happening around us. Our government, the the shooting, and, and all that shit that we have to manage to somehow end up having a great day. Yeah. And and I. Try to do as much as I can. Good for you. You know what I mean? Yeah, and yeah. Um, what's next? What's next, brother? Busy guy like you that has a lot going on. And <laughs> you know, next is yeah. probably uh, doing the same. I mean, spreading love. Yeah, yeah good. You know, and tea good, bagging. Good. No, hey. <laughs> <laughs> One tea at a time. You're One tea at a time, world, bro. But listen, uh, it, it is. We need guys like me. We need guys like you who yeah. are who are who are spreading positive energy. We yeah. do. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? So, and yeah. and uh, the more of, of us revolving around the industry, the better it is for the environment, the better it is for the psychological state yeah. people, you know? And it's uh, pretty cool that you step out of your your uh, podcast environment where you just do like real estate and uh, yeah. and mortgages to a guy like me who's completely the opposite. Yeah. Which I do invest. I mean, I do invest. Yeah. But I'm just on a very small scale and I look things a little bit differently in terms of investments. Right, right, right. I mean, so I am just a little bit more conservative, you know. Yeah. But I love the young people's drive to now to invest. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this is crazy. 
Yeah. Now everybody, what do you do? I'm an investment. I do real estate investment. He's like 24 years old, real estate investment. Fuck, good for you, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So it pushes me a little bit. Yeah. You know, so I buy here and there. Yeah. But not as much as I probably should have done when I was earlier. See, if I would know what I know now. Yeah. If I would have the same friends around me that I have now, I probably would have done very well in terms of like real estate. Cause it's good. Now it's more like, okay, I'm 41 years old. I'm going to do another lesson then. I'm like, yeah, I don't know. I'll keep, I'll keep it what I have now for now. It's always a good time. Always. <laughs> you're right. And you know what? You're right. Yeah. yeah. You're right. You're right. You're right. But I guess, look, I had a conversation with a friend of mine and, and I, he asked me, why aren't you doing as much investment that you probably should? I'm like, you know what? We, I grew up so poor. Like when we came to Canada, we had, all we had is five hundred dollars. So poor, we ended up living in Jane Finch. Yeah. So I went through the whole shebang, you know, uh, of of growing up in a bad areas and transitioning to a better area, you know. And we were always in debt. My family was always in debt. Okay. Constantly, people are asking for money. Constantly, people, mom bore the stepdad, and fuck, he went just nuts, you know. And because I lived in that environment. I like to be debt free, mm. like personally for me. And for me, it's so hard to overstep that boundary, like into pushing myself into a debt, even though it's a good debt. Yeah. That is, that is uh, probably like more or less psychological. That is hard for me to, you know, to push forward into investing more. So what I'm doing is that is more like very conservative, easy where I know I can afford it, where I know it's not going to bother me in case shit goes you know, down, if anything goes bad, you know? Yeah, but you know, on a big scale like you guys do, which is crazy, and and that's why the return is so good. Um, it's hard for me psychologically. Yeah, yeah, I mean, maybe you can change my mind, but I mean, it's it's very very, and I that's I think the difference between me and the younger generation mm. because they don't give a fuck about that part. Yeah, they're more ballsy. They listen to guys like yeah. you, like fuck, I can do it too. Let's do it. Yeah, you know, this guy said this. Fuck it, let's. Yeah, when you reach my age, I'm like, mm, okay, so. Take it easy out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Do, do your tease. We'll break, we'll break you. So we'll break tease. You. Oh, you can try. <laughs> so the tease. Do a little bit more tea bagging and you'll be fine. <laughs> that will. That for sure. <laughs> Have a tea. Chill out, bro. <laughs> but I, I am. I am. I am. Uh, I always been scared of that. That's why I. I. I don't have any debts. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Amen. There's nothing wrong with that, bro. Everyone's got their own way of looking at things, and there's there's no wrong way. Absolutely. And but I do, like I said before, I yeah. really. Do these these this new generation of of investors inspire me? Yeah. Like, as a person who speaks and 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 analyzes things, for me it's like, this is crazy. This is so cool to see that you know, young yeah, guys in Ferraris, Lambos, you know. Yeah. yeah. This, and you ask what they do? Oh, we're real estate. I'm like, this is amazing. You know, what I mean, when I was their age, I mean, I can only dream about these kind of things. I can only dream about Ferraris and Lamborghinis. You know. Yeah. yeah. Now they get an opportunity to try these things before they get fifty. Yeah. You know what I mean. Everybody said, when you get 50, buy yourself a nice car. When you get a 50, you know, you retire. No, no. Yeah. That's the perfect time to enjoy this shit. You make the money, enjoy it now. Right, right, you, right. You know, the way you think when you're 24, when you have that Lambo Ferrari, yeah. it's not the same thing when you're 50. No, 50 no. 50 is like, eh, okay, cool, I have it. You know, 24 is like, wow. Wow, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so talk a little bit about the curriculum, the education system here in Canada compared to what it looks like and, and what it is in Europe. Look, we just talked about in the car the difference between European education system and uh, yeah. uh, North American education system. Right. In Europe, especially let's say where I come from, Russia, they teach you how to live by today's day. You know what I mean? Like today is good, perfect. In North American um, uh, education system, they teach you how to do how to live twenty years from now. You know what I mean, to invest into the future and to invest into yourself. You know what I mean? That is the biggest, uh, and that's why, uh, like you guys, when you guys lend, you lend to the future. Mm. I mean, you educate these kids, this this uh, um, the people who invest with you for the future. Russia is different. Okay. Europe is different right. because everything is so revolving completely the other direction than here. You know, uh, just their mindset is completely off. Mm. You know. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And 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 what is it that you felt? different here than there when it comes to running a business when it comes to the economy when well, you can't to... run a business for us you know somebody no there's no way you can run a business unless you know somebody. okay explain 
Um, well, first of all, there's a lot of payoffs. Get, uh, I'm sure here too, but they're the, the, there's very open. Um, you can get closed down like this. So who you got to pay off? Cops, fire department, health department, all oh, the cities. Oh, oh, you got everybody. You want to run a proper business, you're going to run everybody. Mm. Here is so what is it? They'll just come up to you and ask you for cash or oh, those those side of the spec equity. No, oh, they'll send an inspection, you know. And when the inspector comes in, and he'll make you feel like, okay, you want me to stop coming, right? And then you, you figure out your own way. Okay, you push an envelope and that's it. Right. Okay. Yeah. So you're just throwing envelopes on on the other side. That's it. You just throw those over everybody. Yeah. How do you how do you know like what the right amount is? Usually they'll they'll make sure that you know. <laughs> yeah, right. Like, they'll they'll make, sure that just, <laughs> yeah. So listen, I just wanted to thank you for coming on today. I know you're a busy guy. You got a lot going on. You got your own podcast and uh, and a business to run. And appreciate you coming in, uh, sitting here and and giving us a lot of education and knowledge and wisdom and 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 your experience in life and 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 more so the tea business. <laughs> that was awesome, bro. I don't think. I've ever, nor will I ever have <laughs> moving forward another conversation revolving around T as in depth as I had with you. So thank you, bro. I appreciate you, my man. I really appreciate you inviting me. I yeah. think what you guys are doing great and continue doing what you're doing because pushing the society forward in the right direction is extremely important. And as far as I can see, you're doing it. So keep doing what you're doing, brother. Thank you, brother. And for the audience and everyone, let them know uh, where they can find you if they want to give you a call uh, and have a laugh. If you will. <laughs> if you want to talk about more about my tea bagging, you, can, <laughs> you, you can you can surely find me on his <laughs> on his friends list or Alex Jimon official, and uh, there's a lot of interesting content, uh, a lot of funny stories. They caught me here a little bit off guard, but it's good. You got the, listen, you're the first one who did it. Good for you. Yeah, very good. But, um, <laughs> you know what? I'll I'll post it later on, and I'll tag you. My fucking funniest story. Man. <laughs> right. I got to go through my phone, man. Yeah, yeah. That's what I mean, guys. Right on, right on. Very cool. Thank you very much for tuning in to What Would It Cost? As always, it's an absolute pleasure to to bring these episodes to you guys and feeling very grateful that we get to sit down with such interesting people and entrepreneurs that bring so much to this world. And uh, please don't forget to subscribe and like as that's how we continue this movement. Mm-hmm.